So you'll recall in the last video I said that costs accumulate by department and that in the production report we list the total costs incurred during a period and we also list the number of units produced during the period and I said you can sort of see how we can figure out our cost per unit. Well, yes and no. I'm going to introduce something now called the equivalent units of production and let's say this is our factory and that little s is our is our assembly line or our production line and on that production line we have a product that travels from station to station and some work gets done on it and at any given time there because the line keeps moving there's product on the line when it comes off the line it gets piled up at the end of the line in uh, in boxes or however it is and these are everything that we have done those are easy to count right I mean you can see them and we'll just do a few more here to make the visual look a little more appealing these are our finished products these are for this department these are completed units there's no doubt about how many there are they're completed but look over here these are partially completed how shall we count those remember now we're tracking the production report tracks the total cost for the period well the total cost for the period covers everything here all units here so if that's the total cost obviously the total cost does not represent all the completed units it must refer to some of the partially completed units as well so what's our cost per unit well, somebody may argue well why don't you just take whatever's on the line and divide it by two and say that it's 50 percent done because at any point some of it is just started some of it's in the middle and some of it's at the end so on average it must be 50 percent done right well let's take this mark right here let's say that pretty much all the raw materials have been added to the process at this point uh, but only 20% of the conversion costs have been applied. 50-50 would be wrong. Let's say we take here. We might find that the majority of our conversion costs are done at this point, and all we really have to do is add more raw materials to whatever is there. So 50-50 would be wrong as well, or 50% would be wrong. So we have to have some way of figuring out, well, what do these partially completed units cost? we do something called converting them to equivalent units so there might be 20 units there but if we had to pile them all up into into complete units how many would there be out of those 20 partially completed so we take the number of partially completed units that's easy to count as well the number of partially completed units and we multiply it by the percentage complete but not overall we say, well, of the ones that are sitting there, how, what percentage of raw materials are complete? Then what percentage of labor is done? And then what percentage of overhead has been applied? Or we may just combine labor and overhead into conversion costs and say, what percentage of that is done? So we do this by cost, not within each department, by the way. So our completed units plus these partially equivalent these partially completed units remember we turn them into equivalent units so completed plus equivalent will equal our total units produced that's the number we divide by total cost for the period we first have to get our equivalent units completed we know what they are the hard part of process costing is figure out what our equivalent units are that's the hardest part after that it's pretty easy so equivalent units of production, that's what we're, the, the total units produced are what we call our equivalent units of production. The equivalent units of production is the completed plus equivalent. Now the cost of these equivalent units of production can be computed two ways. We can use a first in first out inventory system or a weighted average. Two different inventory methods. Remember for job costs there's only we can track every cost of that job. We don't have to use any particular weighted average or FIFO. But because we're making the same thing over and over and over again, well, costs could be rising. Do we use weighted average or FIFO? So we're gonna focus on weighted average for the first part. In the appendix, we'll hit FIFO. So weighted average, the equivalent units of production under weighted average, the equivalent units of production equal the units transferred to the next department or to finished goods, in other words, the units that have left the department, the units transferred to the next department or to finished goods 
however many those are, we add those to the equivalent units in ending work in process inventory for whatever department we're looking at. Because remember, they accumulate by department. Every department will do this. So the equivalent units in ending work in process, and remember our, equi our equivalent units are our partially completed units multiplied by the percentage that they're partially complete. So the unit transferred to the next department, these are complete. So there's our complete. And our equivalent units in ending work in process inventory, that's our partially completed inventory. So if you look back up at the factory line that I drew, we see that big pile of white boxes is completed. The little white boxes on the line are partially completed, and we account for them in equivalent units of production. So let's see what that looks like. Let's have a look at what a production report looks like. Really, it's hard to do this in a, in a lecture-style format. Uh, they work better in exercises, so you got to do the exercises for this chapter. But let's have a look at Department A. We're going to look at our units. And we're going to track the, uh, uh, our completion based on materials and conversion. Conversion being direct labor plus overhead. So, let's say that our work in process beginning count. Notice I'm not saying beginning balance. I'm saying beginning count. We had 200 partially completed units when we started the period. We started another 5,000 units during the period. And remember now, a production line means when the unit starts at the back end, Whatever was in work and process are the first ones to file off. We know that. So our total units that we have to account for are 5,200. Well, at the end of the period, we look around and we say, well, you know what? 4,800 completed units have come off the line and we've transferred that to the next department. And sitting on the line right now, our work and process ending count, we've got 400 incomplete units sitting on the line right now. So there's our 5,200 units. And as long as these two numbers match, we've accounted for all the units that we have to account for. Great, 52 and 52. But of the units that are transferred, we can say they have 100% of the materials they need, and they've incurred 100% of the conversion that they needed. Of the ones left on the line, uh, uh, management makes an estimate saying, well, of those 400, 40% of the material costs have been incurred and 25% of the incur conversion costs have been incurred. So, for our units transferred, it's 4,800. We know that. We're, we're, not, we're calculating equivalent units here. 4,800 is 4,800. One complete unit is an equivalent unit. But in our work and process ending inventory, we have 40% of 400 done in materials, so 160 material material wise and 100 conversion wise remember i said these accumulate by cost now so 4960 is our equivalent units for materials 4900 is our equivalent unit for conversion and at this point you're probably saying it doesn't make any sense they're not the same number how do you work with that watch now we have to account for our costs this is exactly once we get our equivalent units now we have to account for our costs. We'll have a work in process beginning balance, and our beginning balance might have a certain number of convert, a certain dollar value for conversion costs, a certain value for materials, and we know what our total beginning balance is. We have added costs during the period. Well, we know what uh, conversion and labor costs are. We know what material costs are. We can't track them per unit, but we know the totals. So we'll have a total for conversion cost, we'll have a total for materials that we incurred, and a full total. Well, what we do is we take this total dollar amount for conversion cost and we divide it by the equivalent amount of units in conversion, the total amount for materials cost, and divide it by the equivalent amount for that. So our cost per equivalent unit, which is what we need to figure out, is this ratio, once we do this division, it will be our direct material cost per equivalent unit, our direct material cost. We have 4,960 equivalent units as far as material is concerned, plus we have 4,900 equivalent units as far as conversion is concerned. Once we add those two together, we get our whole cost. There's our whole cost per unit.
So we don't have to find the average of the units done. This is the weighted average of the cost per unit weighted by the percentage complete of the product. So that, our whole cost is this. 4,800 units are fully complete. 4,800 times, so we multiply that 4,800 by the whole cost per unit. Because 4,800 are complete. 4,800 times the whole cost per unit. Plus, our equivalent units in work in process are 160 times our direct material cost per unit. 160 of them are 40% done as far as direct materials. Plus, 100 of them are done with respect to conversion cost per unit. This down here that I've highlighted, just these last two terms, this will total our work in process ending balance and the full amount behind that equal sign from the 4800 times whole cost plus the rest, this full amount should equal that dollar amount. Thank you.